There is something in baseball that's called pepper. It's when a batter stands at the, the mound and has a bat in his hand and he quickly hits balls out to other players who are in a, in a concentric circle standing in front of it. It's really quick, it's really random. The, the players don't necessarily know where the ball's coming, to whom he's going to hit the ball, but they just catch the ball and throw it back to him and it's very random and sporadic. And it's a great way for um, players in baseball to be able to just quickly just practice something that they've already learned. There's this technique in a book called Teach Like a Champion, 49 techniques that put students on the path to college that a lot of our campuses across the district are using. In this book are a lot of specific, concrete, great teaching strategies that a teacher can, use, can read and actually put in place the very next day. I'm in a classroom at Burnett Junior High, Miss Groder's class, and she has been a big fan of this book. She uses a lot of these strategies, and today she's going to demonstrate the strategy for you. Let's all stand up. Please put your chairs in and stand behind your chairs. And what is it called when water fills the pore space between rocks? Billy. Really? What is it called when, you, when water fills the pore, the pore space between rocks? Groundwater, fantastic. And what is it called when humans put something in the environment that is harmful? Kelsey? Pollution. Pollution, fantastic job, guys. Go ahead and have a seat. Questioning is something that is so important in our classrooms. And I want to tell you what I, as an observer of Ms. Groder's class, see that is so awesome about this particular strategy. First of all, it's quick. It doesn't take a lot of time. This is almost like a game. It's almost like the game of Pepper. Students stand up, which is unusual for them, and they're all engaged looking at their teacher. Another thing that's really great about this strategy is that the students are comfortable with it, and although you didn't see students in this classroom give an incorrect answer, I have observed Pepper in other classrooms where they did give an incorrect answer, and it wasn't something that necessarily made the students feel bad because they are very used to this strategy going on. It's quick. The students get over giving the wrong answer very quickly because it is moving so rapidly, and they just move on to the next student. Another thing that is really great about this, the way that Ms. Groder did the strategy that's outlined again in the awesome resource, Teach Like a Champion, is that whenever she does pose the question, she gives the, the question first and then the student's name or the target of whom she wants to answer the question. And what that does is it gets everyone tapped to whose name is she gonna call out. And that gets everybody engaged with the question and then they hear the answer. What happens a lot of times in classrooms is that whenever we ask questions, we call out the student's name and then pose the question. And you as teachers know what happens. All of the other students tune out. They don't engage with the question. Or another thing that happens is you will ask the question and then you'll allow the student who raises their hand to answer the question. And while everyone might hear that answer, the students in the classroom have not all engaged with the question and they don't necessarily remember that answer later. Pepper, like I, I started telling you about, that is like a warm-up. It's something that you do before the, the game actually starts. It's something that they might do at the beginning of the practice. Well, as you notice in Ms. Groder's class, all of the questions that she asks are very low-level questions. They're very knowledge-based questions. That's all that this is. And you don't want to do this whenever it's going to be something that is um, a level of blooms question where the, the kids are really having to really dig in and analyze and the questions, the, the answers are going to be a lot longer. This is something that's meant to just do like a review before a test. And you can see that all of the students in Ms. Groder's class knew all of the answers because she utilizes the strategy a lot and she's an awesome teacher that taught this material well. Um, I really enjoy this strategy. It's important to let them know what your expectations are and what the procedures are. I let my students know what I'm doing and I explain it to them, sometimes explaining the benefits and that sort of thing, but mostly just letting them know what I'm doing so they don't just go like, why is she waiting so long when she's asking this question? This is very uncomfortable. Or why is she picking on me when she keeps coming back to me uh, for no opt out, things like that. Actually standing up helps the students get some blood flow to their brain. It helps it seem as though we're doing different things, although it's the same 
thing that we're doing, which is reviewing. The cue of standing up lets them know that it's going to be a fast pace, back and forth, um, really quick, lower level questioning. And with them knowing that, it gives them a boost of confidence um, that it generally takes to go out on a limb to answer some of these questions.